Good morning. Welcome to worship at Grace Church. I'm Pastor Charlie Salisbury, and I welcome everyone here today. And if you're here for the first time, we have a special welcome to you. We're all on journeys, my friends. Sometimes our journeys bring us here often, and sometimes once in a blue moon. But if today is the blue moon, we're glad you're here. We pray that our worship today might be a blessing to your life and, and also in the life of those that you love. I pray that Jesus can bring a peace to your heart that indeed is a blessing each and every moment. Welcome to worship today. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Grace family from the Yinglings. Please join us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, His only, only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God and Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Here I am to bow down Here I am to say 
bow down Here I am to say that You're my God You're all together lovely All together worthy All together wonderful to me Good morning, Grace family from Cindy and Dave Jenkins. Hope you have a good day. Good morning from the Umberger family. Ah, hmm. I hear something. I wonder who it is. Hello? 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 Hi. What's wrong? I'm really scared. You're scared? Well, let me see who you are. Well, hi, Kiki. Hi, Pastor Charlie. How are you today? I'm good. Aw, but you're scared, huh? I'm very scared. You're very scared. Uh-huh. Are you scared of uh, what's going on now? Yeah. Yeah, school is a little different, isn't it? It is. Is it scary to go to school sometimes? Yeah. But your teachers are doing everything they can to make you feel better, aren't they? Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. You know, sometimes we don't always know what's going on, but it's always good in those times to know that people love us. Isn't that right? Yeah, it is. And you know, your church loves you very much, Kiki. Do you know that? I didn't know that. And God loves you a whole lot. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? It is very awesome. You know, I think, let's pray and talk to God. Okay. Okay? okay. Boys and girls, should we help Kiki pray and make her feel better? Oh, that's great. You know how we pray, remember? Put your hands up and wiggle them. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Oh, look at those wiggling. Kiki's wiggling too. And one, two, three. Dear God, help Kiki and all the other boys and girls who might be a little afraid right now to know that you love them and to know, oh God, that there are people at church who pray for our children every day. Help them not to feel afraid. For God, you will always be with us. Always. Amen. Thank you, Kiki. Thank you, Pastor Charlie. I like your hair. Thank you. I really like your hair. <laughs> Are you jealous? I'm jealous. <laughs> Have a good day, boys and girls. Good morning from the Halkovich household. Please join me as we share in God's word this morning. This is a reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 1 through 15. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet for this place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the land of the Egyptians, and bring them up from the land to a good and large land, 
to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? And so he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My friends, let's gather together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, I give you thanks for our presence. For Lord, you can find us in those moments that we feel lost. Indeed, as the hymn Amazing Grace tells us, we once were lost, but now are found. But sometimes, Lord, that struggle to feel found is evasive. Sometimes we feel lost in this world that we have the challenges. So it's hard to know what is always the right answer. And sometimes we feel lost between so many voices seemingly not saying the same thing and sometimes saying the opposite thing. Help, help you, oh God, help find us. Help us give us peace that even when we don't know all the answers, that you have a hold on our lives, Lord. As we pray, help those who feel lost in body. While indeed there may not be anyone near us who struggles with their health, they are all over the place. Sometimes in quiet places, struggling against COVID or other diseases, and indeed, in this time, not being able to always be visited or supported in the way that they would want. Sometimes isolation makes you feel lost. Speak to those situations, oh God, and let your voice bring comfort. Sometimes, oh God, we feel lost in our soul. But sometimes when we pray, it isn't always with the same energy or fervor. We've struggled to believe at times, Lord. Struggled to trust you and we know we should have, Lord. Help us with our unbelief. Help us to know that you love us despite the times we don't always speak to you, or maybe even turn our back on you, Lord. That your patience, love, and grace goes all beyond all our expectations. And you still are the great shepherd who with the flock of 99 will look for that one who's missing. And when we are that one sheep, Lord, Help us to know that you'll never give up on us. And so, Lord, as we pray this day, we pray for all those who feel lost and pray that through our worship, our words, our witness, our actions, our love and our mercy, 
can speak out into this world to find those who struggle and let them know there's a family of God who loves them very much. Help us, Lord, to know that being part of a church home is not nearly as much about a building as it is a community who walks, who journeys, who runs, who struggles, who stumbles, and everywhere in between. But you, O oh God, are the constant. You are with us in all things. Let that gift go before us in every moment of every day. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Please join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. love
with love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. Good morning, my friends. Today, we shared a very familiar passage of Scripture. And for those of us who are a little bit older, some of us cannot hear that passage without thinking of the face of Charlton Heston. And we sort of were schooled in C.C.B. DeMille's account of Moses meeting God in the Ten Commandments. But I am going to take this narrative that is shared by Scripture in a little different way. And now we join Moses. Moses had a new life. Yes, we know he went from the bulrushes to Egyptian prince and now as a shepherd out of Midian. If you remember, he killed an Egyptian who was beating a Hebrew slave, and for that action, he had to run because Pharaoh wanted him dead. And so he went out and basically connected with the Midianites who were distant relatives. Um, Actually, they were descendants of Abraham and his second wife, Keturah, who he had married after Sarah had passed. But the Midianites did not consider themselves Hebrew. So Moses was out tending sheep, but probably his mind at times was back in Egypt, thinking about his Hebrew family and also thinking about his Egyptian family. But while Moses found safety in Midian tending sheep, He probably never felt at home. What news that he received about the Hebrew people probably came through um, caravans coming from Egypt through Midian and going to other places, perhaps Mesopotamia. And he would hear bits and pieces And what he had heard recently was not good at all, for a new pharaoh had come to power, Ramses II, who was perhaps historically the greatest builder in Egypt. And in building, he needed all the workers he could. And so the Hebrews who formerly were welcomed to Egypt as guests were now slaves and who now struggled mightily. Many who wanted to die. Yet Moses was no longer part of that, or so he thought. And instead, he had a very consistent life. Now, shepherds in the time of Moses did not have pastures that were exclusive to them. No, often they would travel with their sheep to wherever the sheep were, the the grass was plentiful. And sometimes that would take them miles and miles and miles away from their home tent. And on this particular shepherding journey, Moses found himself at the base of Mount Hebron, uh, which was also known as Mount Sinai. And as he was peering up, he saw something quite unusual, a fire. Now, if there's anything I think that's been consistent with humanity, we've always had a fascination when we see a fire to look at it and, and wonder where it comes from. I mean, when I drive down the road, if I see some fire and smoke going up, I'll often look over there and see if it's coming from a bonfire or or a burn barrel, or something like that. And I think that was the same thing that Moses had. But as he looked at it, something was strange about this fire. 
did not consume anything. And that was fascinating to Moses. And it says in scripture that there was an angel there. And ironically, still, the angel was not what fascinated Moses. It was still how that fire could burn and yet not consume that bush. And so he gets closer to investigate. And as he gets closer, he hears a voice that says, Moses, Moses. Now, right now, I don't believe Moses knew who was calling him. And so he gets closer and he hears the voice again. And it says, take off your sandals for the ground on which you are standing is holy. Now, I think even with this command, Moses is still not clear about what's going on. Until the voice says, I am the God of your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then all of a sudden, it clicked. And Moses drops and puts his face into the ground because if there's anything he knew as a Hebrew is if that he, if he gazed on at God, he was a dead man. Then God continued to speak. First answering a question that I think was on Moses' mind as well as every Hebrew in the world. Where is God? This God who called the people of Israel, who said, I will be your God and you will be my people. God, do you know what's going on in Egypt? What benefit at all is it being your people? In fact, we almost feel like it's a curse being your people, God. And so God speaks. He said, I'm concerned about their suffering. I hear their cries. I see their pain. And while that seventh verse speaks something clearly, I think it's also something we realize. When God meets us in prayer, whether it's in the warmth of the Holy Spirit or it's the presence of resurrection, we believe there's someone on the other end. And that's an important thing when we talk about meeting God. You know, I don't think everyone who claims to be a Christian fully believes this. If you look at historically, someone like Thomas Jefferson classified himself more as a deist. And what he says is God created the world and basically is letting us run it. But we believe something else sometimes, that we need God. We need a God who is going to intervene. We need a God who cares and is going to do something about it. We need a God who still does miracles because in case you haven't seen, we're not always so good about running this world. It was God's choice that day. Moses did not seek him out. Moses was simply trying to find what's going on with this fire. And in fact, I would tell you, if Moses knew he was going to meet God, he possibly would have turned and ran the other way. But God decided that on that day, he was going to do something. And God decided that the time was now. Now, as he heard this, Moses was probably getting excited in the good news he was hearing. The good news for his people back in Egypt. Moses knew something was coming. And maybe at that moment, 
Moses thought God was going to snap his fingers and everything was going to be fixed. Moses was ready for a big time miracle. Well, God would do some miracles, but Moses' idea that he would simply be an innocent bystander, well, he was going to get surprised. And so God is revving him up. God says, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. And Moses is saying, yeah. He says, God said, I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. And Moses said, yeah, here it comes. So I have decided to come down and rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and bring them up to this land flowing with milk and honey. And Moses is probably ready to stand and say, hallelujah. And then God says, so now I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. And then all of a sudden Moses says, say what? Moses said, I'm sending you. And I mean, God said, I'm sending you, Moses. And Moses still can't get it through his head. What? Me. Moses said, who am I that I should go there, Pharaoh? And the translation basically means, God, I don't think that's a good idea. Couldn't you just zap them or something? You know, zap those Egyptians. And God said, I will be with you, Moses, and this shall be a sign to you that when you've brought the people out of Egypt, you're going to gather here around this mountain. And Moses is thinking, yeah, but Pharaoh still has a death warrant on my life back in Egypt. And you want me to go where? To Pharaoh. To Pharaoh. To Pharaoh's house. Me. And he looks up this mountain and said, why don't you just... Put the people here. Moses is, is trying to figure out any way he can get out of this now. And so he comes up with a real simple thing. He said, God, I don't even know your name. What am I supposed to tell them? He's searching for anything he can. And God said to Moses, tell them I am has sent you. Now, in Hebrew, I am means all three tenses. In other words, what he's telling them, telling Moses to tell the Hebrews is, I have been with you. I am with you now, and I always will be. God also said, tell them, I am the God of your fathers, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that God has sent Moses to you. Now, if you look at the rest of this third chapter, you'll see it's a discussion. God is planning out how he wants things done, how he wants the exodus to happen. And Moses is still trying to get out of this job. He still hasn't accepted it. And he's searching for any reason to tell God, there's got to be somebody better than me to do this. But God is sending Moses. And we do know Moses went back to Egypt and we do know God works some awesome miracles and we do know that Moses brought the Israelite people through a wandering desert back to Mount Sinai. Many people are looking for a miracle to end this pandemic. We have many of us who are lamenting the loss of things we love to do, places we want to be, people we want to see. We also know there are people who are fighting for their lives now and people who are struggling to find answers. 
I do believe that God is just as concerned about our time now as God was looking upon the Hebrews back in the time of Moses. But perhaps again, the miracle that needs to happen is not with us being innocent bystanders, but with us being active participants in God's answers. I want to close this message by telling you about something that some people would call miraculous. As many of you know, Grace Church gathered and gave out over 700 backpacks to students in our area. And you might say, Pastor Charlie, that's awesome, but that's surely no miracle. But let's look at it from a kid's perspective. They gave me a backpack with no strings attached. They gave me a backpack and they didn't even know my name. They gave me a backpack without ever expecting a thank you. They gave me a backpack and I don't even go to church. They gave me a backpack and now my mom will have some extra money to buy something else that we need. They gave me a backpack to help me at school. You tell me what a miracle is, my friends. Amen. Go in peace, go in love, and above all things, 
go this day with the knowledge that Jesus Christ is your Savior. Amen.